Oh, yeah, right, everybody. Great timing, Christian. That was great timing. Hello, everybody. Welcome <laughs> to the Gear Swap, week number three. We are dominating the boards. That is the title of this week. Welcome. Oh, my God, the camera's not working. Why are the cameras not working? There we go. The oh, cameras man. are working. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yay. Hey, cameras are working. Hello, everybody out there in the world. We are on week three of the podcast. I am Bratz. I have Christian 10K and Birdie, otherwise known as Natalie, here with us again, as always. We have some food eating in the background. We'll let it slide. It's okay. I know we all have stuff Nobody going asked on. for your permission. I am starving. I'm eating dinner. Let me live on period. That's that on that. Absolutely. We're done <laughs> we, uh, we did run a little bit late last week, so we're going to try and do this one a little bit quicker than we did last week. Um... First of all, I am going to make a correction from last week. I wrongly said that it was Sharpshooter putting up videos from Michigan. That's Killswitch. He's a boss at the video, so thank you, Killswitch, for putting up all that content. I love watching it. I'm pretty sure everyone else does, too. It's true. I do. I love seeing the jelly lean. <laughs> all right. So I have some stuff to say, but I'm going to keep mine for last this week. Um, guys in the chat, if you're listening... Uh, go ahead and follow, subscribe. Uh, if you have a Twitch Prime sub that you're not using, send it our way. Uh, what we're going to be doing is once I can start making deposits from the Twitch, give me the Bezos bucks. Uh, we're going to start getting some free games and free sessions for the chat here. Uh, giving those out week by week and kind of giving back to you guys for helping us out. Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome. We love, also, we, we would love handy. to get... Yeah, we'd love to get your feedback on the audio levels. Um, mine are showing in the yellow, which means we should be good across the board. But if anyone's clipping, please let us know. All right. That being said, Christian, I'm going to let you go first. How was your week, sir? Oh, man. How was my week? Uh, you know, still being a slave to eye combat. Because, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I have been picking up the slack that was left over from James, but I'm learning a lot. And that. <laughs> JP is calling me, and it is annoying. Uh, dude was on PS4 chat earlier. He said, "Yo, leave, have me in the background. Just like, just have him in the background <laughs> on the PS4." And then uh, I turned my PS4 off on him. That was that. Uh, basically, <laughs> my week was good. Fixed about like a bunch of guns. We were down seven by the end of the day. They were all Ooh. back out there. Wow, uh, nice job. But, thank you. Uh, I'm, but that was basically my weekend, just work, work, work. Okay, I can respect that. Birdie, how was your week? Good. School. Working hard, not hardly working. That's how it be, folks. <laughs> Pretty That's much. That's the goal, it. hardly working, staying in bed. No, 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 no. Not, hard, no. not hardly working. Well, this week maybe. I've been less than functional, but it's fine. Everything is fine. We're getting through. That's all that matters. Exactly. Love We're that. We're making it. Awesome. Fake it till you make it. Or just make it. Or fake Whoa. it. Whatever works. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I thought you were a robot pitcher for a second there. All right. Am I okay? Yeah, no, you're fine. It just hiccuped for a second. We're back. You're okay. good. All right. Me. I've had a busy week. Um, huge announcement at the end of the show. Stick around. Most of you are going to like it. Most of you already know about it mm -hmm. uh, because I can't keep a secret if my life depended on me. <laughs> it's a true story. I could say the same about myself. Right? Um, so I don't know if you guys experienced this. Um, I'm also saying I'm a lot because I'm nervous as shit right now. But I get cold when the podcast starts because like the adrenaline dump from talking to all these people on the internet. Ooh. I'm chilly right now. It's, uh, yeah, you can just, like, it's just, like, the more we do this, the more we get used to it. Like, right. it's all progress. Yep. Um, yeah, but anyways. No, I feel that. I do get a little bit, like, jittery. Mm -hmm. My... Yeah, it gets, yeah. My I, sometimes week... I don't know what to say. So yeah, like... my week was spent doing a lot of updates for the podcast. Um, I have a lot of new scenes for you guys. I cleaned up a lot of the way stuff looks. Um, I have contributions from four fields now. We got Waukesha in the mix, so we're going to be going over their top ten this week. Um, 
people out there that have been helping us out. Madison, we have uh, Fern, live for the moment. Up in Michigan, we got Redneck, who gave us their bios, and then Waukesha Frog Chant. So we got that coming up. We've got announcements of new players that have earned their wings this week. I just kind of went based on the uh, recent players and people that were level one captains. So we will get to them after the top tens. We have a new segment directly after that as well, which is a secret until we get there. After that, we're going to go into mission discussion A to Z. This week is domestic threat. Uh, that should be fun. We got uh, a quick chat about basics for both fields at Chicago. Uh, next week we'll be talking about domination. And then, like I said, at the end, I got my, uh, large announcement we're going to get to. So with that being said, let's get on with the show and hit the top tens. Yay. All right. As this <clears throat> loads up, we have the top 10 for Chicago. Uh, what we're going to do to save a little bit of time here is I'm just going to blast through reading them and then we're going to fill in. Oh, I was definitely supposed to read out one of those. Whatever. Um, mm, oopsies. So we have in the top 10, coming in in 10th place, Commander Irwin. Coming in 9th place, Pew Pew Bratz. Coming in 8th, Hover Vibes. 7th, Liana is Sparkly. 6th, Speed Runner. Fifth, John L. Fourth, Tiberius. John L. Third, Mr. X-Ray Gun. Number two, Killer Cobra. And we have a brand new number one for the week, unseating Killer Cobra's two-week streak of Ben Big Mac. Congrats to him. He was there effectively the entire weekend, from what I could tell. Mm-hmm. He was. Saw him there every time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I never, I never oh, got to chat. ask him what map he like preferences, either Shanty or Alcatraz. He seems to do equally well in both. Seems to be a good all rounder. Yeah, um, he just enjoys playing, and he's good. And he streams. Go check out his channel. Oh yeah, he does. Um, yes. You guys talk. He says I'm Alcatraz. Go look it up. Yes, I love him more now. He says Alcatraz. Yes. Then you used to be cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> relentless uh. um yeah x-ray and cobra uh cobra i expect to see up there x-ray i'm actually really happy to see there uh they played really well this week and i played a lot of sessions with them actually uh, and, um, they were playing a lot yeah saturday and sunday i saw them uh him and uh and liana pretty much the entire weekend so um just Real, real strong players. Our, our kill streak lead for the week. It looks like a tie of twenty six between Tiberius and uh, Janelle. Um, KDR winner went to Killer Cobra, of course. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, nothing else out there jumps out at me really. It's kind of a pretty normal week. I will say, Commander <laughs> Irwin hitting the top ten is pretty cool because I know they went out of state for one of the days. Yeah. Oh yeah, they had he 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 went out of state and came back. Yeah, mm -hmm. they went up to uh, Madison to play. Came back mm -hmm. just to play, which is crazy. I feel I... like that's what always happens, though. You like go somewhere else to somebody else's location, and it's like even after all of the laser tag you've played, somehow you still have the energy to play one more at home. <laughs> right. I mean, you have to because that's who we are. I feel like that's the only right way to end a trip. Right. And uh, by the way, for those wanting to watch more eye combat content, uh, Ben Big Mac's Ben Big Mac's channel is Coding Frenzy on YouTube. Coding Frenzy. He puts up a video pretty much about every day or two. That's good. That's good. All right. Oh yeah, Fireman Drill. You are right. Hover did go out there. That's right. Hover went up to Michigan. Um, I saw the pictures. They look nice. Yeah. He was upstairs, and video. <laughs> right up, up, like up on the spawn. Yeah, the videos were really fun of that. Um, and it, other than that, I mean, yeah, it's our top ten for Chicago. Let's uh, let's get on to our second location, which is should be Madison if I did this right. Yeah, there we go. 
All right, Madison. Madison's, yep. Madison's top ten. So for these people, since we don't all know them as well, um, I will just give quick bios as provided by Fern. Uh, let's just run down these really quick. So 10th place, Pelupas, Pel Pelupas, Pelupas. Big P coming in 10th place. Uh, ninth place is Big Boofy. Number eight. Oh, look at that. Commander Irwin making another oh, appearance. The man. I wonder if that will come into play later. This is so bad. I might have to switch over to my Wi-Fi because now my hotspot is not working. Okay. Like, you guys, oh, no. your audio is clipping like crazy. Okay, go ahead and switch back. Yeah, I don't know go why now. It. Hopefully the kill, the thing doesn't die. But if it does, we'll just keep going. Um, I'm just we got this. Switch for... Yeah, just go ahead and swap over. Um, In seventh place... Oh, Birdie, mute you. There you go. Mute yourself when you do that. Thank you. Uh, seventh place is Andrew. Uh, sixth place, I believe this is all the all the angles covered. That's a little hard to read, but I believe that's trying to say all the angles covered. Um, fifth place is I'm Moto. Moto likes you. Uh, fourth place is Knees Duts. Third place, Duts. Is Barney <laughs> Stinson. Knees Second Duts. place, Rainbow Seven, and first place is Doki. So, some of the folks on this top 10 that we are not super familiar with. Number 10, Palupas, uh, according to Fern, comes in with his father, plays pretty often. Uh, got a 31-0 and game this last Sunday, which in goes off by that kill streak up there. Um, fast on his feet, rushes to where he needs to be after he's killed, and he's actually the person that pushed Fern out of top 10 for the week. So, good on you. Good job, Palupez. Yeah. Big you boofy. deserve that spot. 31 and 0. Yeah, it's wild. Absolutely wild. Big Boofy apparently is uh, not well personally known, even though he's a, a captain there. We're going to have to get uh, Fern to get an interview with this gentleman. Um, apparently, just a play style and adapts to others. So that's a really good resume line there. Uh, Fern, nice. you got to get on this, buddy. You got to get me the info. I need the tea. I need the tea. Yo. Uh, Irwin, we know he plays at Chicago. Um, Andrew, I believe. Oh, Andrew is another new regular. Um, not often coming in as he's still only level 43. But uh, looks to be coming in more and more often. So we would love to see that person come by more. Oh, all the angles cover. That's Kaya. Of course, I should have read this before. Yeah. Kaya. Uh, this one has a little bit more detailed description. Killer on the second floor spots. Uh, high kill streaks, and will always rush back to respawn and hunt down whoever killed her because she's got a bit of spite. <laughs> Kai is the best. Yes, I Dude, love the her. revenge kills are always the most fulfilling kills. Cause it's, oh, they're wonderful. That's like, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also, it's she's basically a, like. Yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, oh, sorry. It was like basically, I'll oh, screw me, not screw you. That's that's how those are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she's them. also a crazy objective player. Uh, I don't think I've I've been up there a few times with her playing, and she just always escapes jailbreak, and that's a hard map to escape jailbreak on. That's true, yeah. It's a rough one. Yep. It's a doozy. Uh, fifth place is Moto Moto. Uh, according to Fern, he gave me the big whale face. That's an employee account. Shouldn't happen, but it's up there. <laughs> Boo. But look how good the employees are doing for their teams, though. Yeah. They really care. That is true. They're really pulling those points for the they losing team. They really care. Like... Pulling zero punches. <laughs> All right, and then uh, Knees Duts is Gage. He is an Knees employee Duts. up there. Uh, still finds ways to get his sessions in and has improved a lot. He is now a team leader. He can show you a bunch of new routes or even come up with some new ones. I'd be interested to see new ones. Uh, very good balanced player. Does both objective and kills. Uh, nice. everybody, everybody knows Barney. Barney's been Barney. there forever. The mouth guard Barney. guy. Okay, I'm not mad. And then Doki's up there at number one again. We love Doki. We do love Doki. 
Oh, and Rainbow. I skipped over Rainbow. Rainbow's I was badass. just gonna say, Rainbow 7, wow. yo, number two spot. Like, she was literally messaging me on, or not messaging me, but like hitting all the Facebook likes right before the show. So if I forgot her, I would feel like an ass. Sorry, Rainbow. Uh, we love you. You did forget her. So do you feel like an ass? I do feel like an ass. <laughs> I should make myself a donkey for the rest of the show. <laughs> Um, notable top scores for the week. We've got 105,000 for Doki. That's a lot of playtime. Uh, kill streak yeah. goes to Doki with 38. KDR goes to uh Palupas with 516. So good job to you guys. Oh, cool. Well done on the sessions. Congrats, y'all. All right, here you comes guys did great. Here comes Very the next celebrate. one. Our buddies up in Michigan. My combat. Yo. All right. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. This is uh the missions were done this week by Redneck. So thank you very much, Redneck. We appreciate your work. Thank you. It's coming in tenth place. Redneck. Look at that guy. Always finding a way to get his name in the podcast. Apropos. Very. Uh ninth place, JFG one. Eighth place, hover vibes. Who's that guy? Oh man. <gasps> Cheek pain. My little, oh, it's my little bro. <laughs> Seventh place, Shooter McGavin, 25. Sixth place, Drago Bloodfist. Fifth place, Sharpshooter, 27. Fourth place, Thermit the Frog. Third place, Jelly Bean. Hell yeah, with the Jelly Lean. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Here's a shock. Here's Have a shock. Guys- I hope everyone's <laughs> sitting down because second place is Meth Morrow. Oh, part two. He was second oh. place last week too, yeah? No. Yeah. Wait, was he? I yeah. thought he was. I thought he was. Oh, yeah. Meth, you got to pick it up, buddy. You're putting, <laughs> you're putting the Matt, Chris you're name to shame. you're doing great. Don't no, listen you're doing to great. these haters. You're amazing. <laughs> when you get to the top of the mountain, it's kind of hard to look out and realize you got to keep pushing. <laughs> Uh, and then number one for the week, Black Attack. Nice. I don't think. Do we know who that is? Um, Black Attack. Actually, he's not in the uh, not in the not in the list by Redneck. So we're gonna have to have some wow, words. Wow! Bam, bam! Secret killer. That's okay. The um, key. Some of the people we're not super familiar with on this list, uh, JFG, I'm not super familiar there, uh, apparently uses cover often uh, and will often play on his knees. I don't know if that was written on purpose, but that's a little suggestive. Just saying. <laughs> um, he is really hard to see, apparently, when he finds his hiding spot. So that sounds like a good old camper. I love it. I can get behind that 100%. Uh, ba 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 ba. We know Kill Switch, Redneck. We've gone over. Um, yeah. Everybody else on this is, uh, yeah. Oh, you know what? I know what he did. He gave me the top 10 for their all the time. That's what he did. Oh. He gave me their all time top 10. It's okay. We'll fix it for next week. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, top kill streak. We've got 41 from Shooter McGavin. Nice job. No, I lied. 43, JFG. I don't ah, know how to nice read. job. Nice job, JFG. Uh, KDR goes to Meth with 592. Mm-hmm. I was going to point that out. Is there a spot out there that, like, you just... Or does he, like, move around or, like... For Meth? Yeah, for Meth. Because that's a high KDR. Um, It is. High from what I understand, he tends to like to play the upstairs area, and then he'll also roam around and just kind of go nuts. Um. Yeah, he's got the full field according to Fire Mandrill. Is that you, Redneck? Full Are you Fire field. Mandrill? <laughs> no, Fire Mandrill is. I think he said it's Thermit. Oh, that's yeah, Thermit. It's thermit. Okay, it's gotcha. Thermit, yeah. I don't know how to read. Oh, so he was there for the last trip. So I definitely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Socialized with him at least once or twice. Absolutely, it's hard to keep track of some people when you only see them like once or twice a year. That's true. It's unfortunate, really. Mm-hmm. It really is. Closer. <laughs> I want to make the trip out to Michigan one day. They can't wait. Mm-hmm. Oh, we totally should. Uh, Sean is planning one in April, I believe. I want to go. In yeah. what? When? 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 Uh, sometime when? in April. I think okay, he... April tenth, maybe something like that. We'll. Uh, I need a. We'll get details from Sean, and we'll. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. I was going to say. We'll get details from Sean. I need a two-week we'll... notice so yeah. that way I can request the day off. Yeah, we'll. So, uh, like... we'll... 
<laughs> got Jonas oh God, fighting in the Joel. chat right now. Jesus, guys, knock yeah, it off. That's a... The Joel Rose. He's ducks. <laughs> All on right. the stream right now, I'm cluelessly lost in my past. <laughs> yeah, you are. Ben Ooh. Big Mac, I'm renting a car if anyone wants the carpool. Yo. Yo, honestly. Okay, back to the stream. Yep. Your... Focus up. Oh, whoa. Hey, uh, Bird, if Brady's you can re redo your video. Uh, oh, no. You've turned into pixels. Oh, you're back. Why did... Oh, am I? Yeah. Yeah, you can't minimize Discord, otherwise it starts messing stuff up. Just leave it. Somewhere on the screen. I didn't. Oh, you didn't? I haven't touched it. Wild. No. Okay. Uh -huh. That's fine. All right. Let's move on to our last and final location. New. <laughs> oh, my God. New this week is... Waukesha. They're back. We did them the first week. Oh, Waukesha. Skipped them the second week. Got them back in the fold for the third week. Thank you to Sixes Waukesha. and Sevens for getting me in touch with um, Rogchamp, who is our contributor from up there. Uh, he wrote us up some nice bios for their folks. Um, and yeah, uh, we're going to hopefully be doing a lot more with them because I know Sixes wants to do a lot more integrating with the community and get everybody kind of back in the fold. We've kind of fallen apart over the last year. So let's get everybody back together. We're in this together. As I make funny faces, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I like it. Anyways, we're doing the rundown. Number 10, Big Sweaty. Number 9, Ash Away. Big Sweaty. <laughs> number 8, Harry Poppins. That's cute. Uh, number 7, mm. Aravan. Uh, another front page champ. Number 6, Turtle 008. The guy I'm currently chasing the pass. If you could stop <laughs> playing, that would be great. Um, number Pretty five. Sure that's just gonna be a motivation to keep playing. Of course, it's like me and Barney. He just like we had a fight for a while, and now he just blew me out of the water. Um, fifth place, Jay Bakes, an OG up there. Fourth place, Qui Gon John. Uh, third. Oh, place, I haven't seen his name in a minute. Yeah. Uh, uh, Qui Gon John. Yo, he's a nice dude. I yeah, love that guy. Really cool. Played in the tournament. Uh, from what I could tell, I likes to help out the uh, new people up there too a little bit. So. Um, yeah, yeah, generally really good player. Um, third place, sixes and sevens. Uh, second place, big Amdal. And first place is Sniper 17. That is a lot of four star generals on their front page, if we can That's just say. That's wild. Half their leaderboard, six of their leaderboard is a four star. Ooh, that's a lot of experience. Uh, <laughs> can't handle the heat get out of the kitchen yep a lot of playing time and money was spent i can tell yeah absolutely mm -hmm. especially by the third place Being going out for all them now. dollar bills yeah <laughs> <laughs> so quick synopsis for these players since most of these people are going to be new for the podcast big sweaty plays everywhere uh if there's a regular on the other team he's coming for you he likes to focus uh -oh. on the regulars and keep them in check. A team player most of the time with only two days played. That's awesome. Um, pretty fearless when he plays, according to Mr. Frog Champ. So I can respect that. If you're playing to take down the regulars and not abuse the new people, you get a thumbs up here. for me. We like it. He's the Robin Hood of laser tech. <laughs> the, hero, <laughs> the hero we deserve. So <laughs> uh number nine is we ash away old regular coming back to play still likes the market uh plays on single fire oh it's female plays on single fire i say that because it's a surprise that. um plays on single fire because of the 39 percent lifetime accuracy Oh, 39 lifetime accurate you said lifetime you, yeah lifetime you you walk a shot people with your single fire i swear <laughs> pop a bless but i can't do it no. here i am walking out with an accuracy of two percent <laughs> <laughs> she said 39 points that's amazing fire. that's a huge stat nice job um, keep me, that going <laughs> keep that going uh eighth place i Harry. might make a new account then <laughs> an accuracy account i love it accuracy account yeah <laughs> uh harry poppins in eighth uh plays up top likes your spawn better than his own uh only two days <laughs> played he plays like a regular he's a team player not afraid to carry doesn't stay in one spot so 
we can respect that play style. Uh, Aravan in seventh plays back near the spawn watching the road. Uh, sometimes we'll go ghetto or market. Aravan's known for knowing where you are before you know where you are. I'm oh. dead. Get at wrecked. Likes your spawn better oh, than his own. Yeah, I know. This apparently, <laughs> Aravan. Amazing. Apparently, Aravan also has aimbot and wall hack, so that should be checked in too. Sixes get on that. Uh, Sniper's the favorite game, and he's a team player with anybody for any game mode. Love that. I love it. That's good. Um, <laughs> team players. I'm just old, hearing nonstop team players. I'm shout out, it. yeah, shout out to old fat and slow in the chat saying accuracy by volume is the f is the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> accuracy by volume. Unload your gun as fast as possible in any direction. <laughs> send the metal. Um, send going it. up. Full going, send. Full send. Just send it all. Uh, how how much should we shoot? Shoot it all. <laughs> Can't take it home. Get fucking rid of it. Fifth place Can't is... Oh, I'm sorry. Sixth place, Turtle. 008. <laughs> uh, he will try to be... Oh, he'll try to go upstairs, control the entire map. Uh, if not, he'll be in the mansion or come in to sweep the spawn. Over 3,000 MVPs with 20 days played. That's a lot of freaking days. Um, <laughs> not a fan of the new players. That's fine. Um, sometimes not a fan of regulars either. Will be a team player in tournaments, however. Like mm, it. Okay. We got so first... when it matters. Okay, cool. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yes, we got. So a, when, we got ourselves. When it's absolutely wolf. necessary. Right. When there's awards on the line, you know. There you go. Yeah. When it really counts. Fifth place, Jay Bakes. Mansions where you'll find him. Loves to spawn kill the other team for days on end. Isn't really a team player with the new players, just the other regulars. 10 days played with 1,400 MVPs on the dot. Jay Bakes, good people. I enjoy playing with them. Uh, very Absolutely. passionate about playing, too. He will, uh, he will get into the game, and that's putting it lightly. True. All right, wetting the whistle. Moving on to number four, Qui-Gon John. Uh, played at our last tournament, which was over a year ago. I comment if you're watching, we want a tournament. <laughs> Give us the tournament. We want True. another tourney. Preferably not at Chicago also. Looking at you, Madison. Uh, Qui-Gon John loves the mansion. Oh, uh, yeah. Loves the mansion. Always on the move. Team player. Always carries his team. 12 days played. 2,500 MVPs. Favorite game, Juggernaut. Because Qui-Gon John doesn't lose his juggernaut. The T. The T, indeed. It's, it's hot. I know someone at uh, Chicago that says the same thing. Dang. It's not me. But like, <laughs> that was, you said it's who, not me. Who is it? You can't leave us hanging. Mike brags about it. Oh, sure. Mike's died so many times. Get out of here. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, dude, I will always be jugging out for my team. I never go down. I'm like, yo, every time. All right. Um, moving on. Number three, sixes and sevens. Uh, I combat staple. Can't find him in the same spot all the time. Five thousand MVPs. Twenty-seven days played. Sixty-five percent win rate. That's pretty telling, right there. Uh, definitely a team player. Highest kill streak of a 140, Mr. Borg himself. If you're playing Hell's Bells and Sixes and Sevens is on the other team, you lost already. Wow. Bold. Yeah. Bold of you to assume you could win Hell's Bells against him. <laughs> yeah, Sixes is a staple. He's He's been around literally, I think, since day one. Um was in the world number one for the longest time and is now not the number one chasing Methamaro. They've got a little bit of an easier field to score points on. That's okay. It happens. Mm. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, yes. Oh, yes, I'll Jelly, take that yes. Jelly in the <laughs> chat. Hello, Jelly, thanks for tuning in. Jelly! It's my girl! I love you! Wow, okay. I'm going to have to turn down that audio for that one. You just spiked my meters here. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we'll turn that down a little. Um, yeah, if you are new to Twitch, I'm going to take a little interview before we get up to number one. Interview, interlude. That's the word I wanted. 
Um, oh. Please go ahead, hit follow, hit subscribe. If you have Twitch Prime, you can link your Twitch Prime. You can give us the $5 free Bezo bucks that Twitch gives you. We appreciate it. When we get to an income that can sustain it, we'll start getting free games for people in the chat. We'll buy codes and we will send them to you. Thank you for watching. Tell your friends, tell your family. Tell your dog. And watch your language. Get your dog a Twitch. Yeah, get your, get your dog a Twitch. Um, Use watch... all your alternate forms of email, you know? Right. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. Uh, watch your watch your language in the chat because we got the moderators with big sticks looking out for it. So don't get yourself a timeout. We want to see your chats. All right. Get yourself a timeout. <laughs> Moving on, we got Bigum Doll. Road or bottom market is where you will find this player. New regular die combat, still learning the ropes with the old regulars. Team player. Uh, might not seem much, but when he has a grenade, he will make sure to use it on you. That's right. Waukesha gets to use the grenade. I forget about this. They do. They have those. Oh. They have the boom booms. They do. I keep forgetting they do. Those things are lit. Waukesha has special privileges. <laughs> <laughs> that they do. Um, Yeah. Uh, yeah. I only have good memories with the grenade. I wish it was be everywhere, but that thing is dangerous AF. It's it it's wrapped in nerf material. It'll mess you up if it hits you. All right, last and last and not least, number one sniper out of anywhere on the map. You won't see sniper stay in one area. He likes them all. He's always on the move. Recently, just got his fourth star. Congratulations on four stars. Congrats, uh, my dude. Win percent Congrats. is sixty three percent. Seven days played with nine hundred eighty seven MVPs. Longest kill streak one thirty two. Shall we? That is your weekly top ten. But wait, there's more. What? There's more. Oh, man. more? You say? More? Do you so want some more. more? Oh hell yeah! Can you say I have some more? Oh my god! <laughs> Alright, we got some more for you. A new feature. First surprise for this stream. We are... You know what? I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to show you. Hopefully you guys oh. like this. T? Behold. Begin the I'm competition. Waiting. Oh! I'm waiting for it to change. We are, as of last week, keeping is. track of all fields' top 10 appearances. Oh, if you make a top yeah. 10... You're going to be on the list. The more times you oh, get the top 10, yeah. higher up on the list you go. Everyone that likes a good friendly competition. Look at all that recognition. Me on stream squinting my eyes to look at this. <laughs> it's going to look bigger on a full screen. God, I um, need to play more. There's literally no reason. Like, I have zero excuse for not being on here besides just not wanting to. <laughs> so your positions are color-coded by the field that you play at. Uh, Chicago is in light red. Madison is in blue. And Michigan is in green. Every Jeez, time you hit no. a top 10 board, you get a tally point. Every week we update the tally. You will notice that we have been tallying for two weeks, and we currently have a player that is in first place, solely in first place. With three boards. Three boards in two weeks. Three boards. Oh. Amanda Irwin, congratulations. You're currently the leader in top Congrats. ten appearances. Yeah, all you need to do is just keep making top ten to stay up there. Yep. Every time you Pretty hit a good. top ten, you get a point. I'd be liking it. Congratulations to our current top ten, which Ooh. is Commander Irwin. Tied at second place are the next 17 spots. I'm not going to read them out. They are oh in alphabetical gosh. order unnecessary so congratulations to everybody on the top 10 you guys Super earned congrats, it congrats y'all keep playing and your name will be up there all right that is <clears> it <throat> for our top 10s Whoa! i didn't know if you guys saw this uh in the chat uh, a little bit earlier but uh a friend challenged me to a gun fixing competition and uh, oh, <laughs> He's I'm down. Crush you. I'm yeah, down. I know. I'm just like, dude. James is better competition. <laughs> like, <laughs> James is the one teaching me. I just started. All right, we are back to the main screen. Cool. All right, that is the top ten. Um, other 
top notables, I just looked at my schedule, which is why we had the schedule. We have to announce some people that got their wings this week. Woo! Wings. You got some shiny new wings. Wings Fly for free. Yep, wings for people who are tuning in on YouTube who don't know what this is. Uh, that is when you hit level 45. 45. 45. Level 45 out of 100, you become a colonel. You get a cool little wing icon next to your name. And then you start the 50 level grind up to uh, becoming a general. Oh. Love All that. right. Uh, wings this week went grind. to Commander Irwin. Congratulations. Big boofy. He is like doing it. Yeah. Irwin he had a big it. week. Irwin had a big week. Uh, Big Boofy also got their wings. Panda Pole got their wings. Unicorn Rage got their wings. And Big Sweaty got their wings. Yes. Congrats to the five of you. If we missed your name, we are human and we apologize. You can contact any of the hosts on Facebook or Twitch or anywhere that you find us. Let (laughs) us know we missed you and we'll get you in for next week. Yes. True. We are all about the inclusion. Natalie, a uh, friend asked you if you're drinking. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, baby. This is a grapefruit mimosa. <laughs> Mama had a long day. It's not that serious, but it is delicious. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you get a second, refresh your camera. You're lagging again. Oh, it's not going to stop, but I will do my best. It might help. Who knows? Thank you. Mm. All right. Going on to oh, you know what? While I'm doing this, our topic for the day, that is going to be a discussion about domestic threat. Domestic threat. Domestic right. threat. Oh, domestic. I th- put oh, my the wrong objective. Oh, mm. oh, uh, wait, it's domination. All right, then domination. Let's do no, it. I like... messed up. It's domestic threat. I fixed it. Up oh, okay, domestic. Th- <laughs> I was okay with any game. I'm an objective player, no, so that was that was my bad. Uh, dom- domination's next week, folks. Domination okay. is next week. Tune in next week for another good game. All right, so. yeah. So we're gonna just hit some easy easy topics here: basic strategy, <laughs> advanced strategy, hiding spots, attack paths, defense paths, and then the differences between the different fields. Uh, oh, add a defense path. Okay, cool. Yep. Or a defense strategy. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So a nice thing is I can just update on the fly here. So as we talk, I'll just add stuff to it. I don't care if you guys see my name. You all know me. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. So we've got um basic strategy. Um, our resident team leader, uh, Christian. You want to give us just a quick thirty second rundown of what domestic threat is for the people. Oh. Yeah. oh. A redemption from last week. Okay, so basically, domestic threat. One team hides a bag in a certain like area of the map, and then the opposing team will have five minutes to go grab the bag, find the bag, grab the bag, bring it back. Obviously, if they die while holding it, they have to drop it, and then it has to touch the ground before the next person can grab it. But basically, the other team has five minutes to find the bag and bring it back to spawn, and then they win. Absolutely. If not, then they lose. So. Correct. Yes. Uh, domestic threat is the first bag game that we are going over. I know that Chicago we use backpacks. I believe that Waukesha also uses backpacks. Um, Michigan I believe uses a backpack, and Madison uses a giant duffel bag. Um, they do. Yeah, they have a huge duffel bag. It's like a sports bag, big giant yeah, green. Wow. I wish I played Domestic Threat when I was out there. Would have loved it. Yeah, it's fun. It's it's really interesting on their field because you can only hide it on one side. Oh, okay. They uh, Michigan Fire does not. Man drill. Yeah, Michigan does not. Y'all play. are missing out. Y'all are missing no, out. No, they're not though. Their field's too small for it. There's nowhere to hide. Is it, it. really? Yeah. Is it really that small? It's really okay, small. I'm back. Hey, welcome Sorry. back. I've never seen it. Never seen Let's it. Let's see if this works. Yay! You're back. Ooh. You are grainy but stable. I like it. All oh, right. there you we'll go. You're good. You are grainy but stable. Oh, so, wow, this is so cute. So basic strategy of the game. Let's start with when you are hiding the bag. So that would be the, the terrorist team. Sorry. <laughs> the correct response is excuse me. <laughs> 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 Can you 
only, only answer incorrectly. <laughs> Belch, why are you looking at me? <laughs> Stop looking at me. <laughs> Alright, so hiding the bag. Okay. I think that it's usually a good idea to do two things when you hide the bag. Number one is you want to have the bag somewhere where you can get back to it quickly if you're killed. Number mm-hmm. two, if you don't do that, is to put the bag somewhere where it can't be seen. Mm-hmm. I know some people take liberties with that, and they think that that means you need to completely obscure the bag. No. Let's put it on top of the elevator. That ain't it. We've had people do that. Oh, God, people oh have done that. gosh, dude. What do you mean I can't put it there? Yeah, ideally, oh. I don't know how most people feel about the game. I personally feel like the bag should be at a point where a small child can grab it. I feel that, yeah, because sometimes small children are playing. Correct. It's been said before, so, like, sometimes, like, when children are playing, I'm just like, okay, it has to be on the ground in plain sight. Um, period. That's yeah. that on date. Fair. Yep, I know, for, you know we've had to make some concessions in Chicago uh, for the fields. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alcatraz, you used to be able to put it in the back hallway. You're no, not allowed to put it back there anymore. It was too... Too easy once it the respawning rules easy. changed. Yeah, too easy to defend it. Uh, sh- over in Shanty, there's a restriction of ground floor, which we can actually take a look at. Uh, so it has to be inside of the orange area on Shanty. Uh-huh. Or, or upstairs. You can put it anywhere upstairs. Upstairs or downstairs, yeah. Upstairs or downstairs. Um, I don't have a map of the other two fields yet because I haven't had time to actually Photoshop draw it. Um, yeah, you know, it is what it is, but, um, Alcatraz is up on the screen now, basically as long as it's in the middle of the prison, which is roughly outlined by the orange area. So if it's inside the orange area, except for the back hallway, you're safe. Um, on Madison, it has to be in the motor pool area. So that's where all the cars are set up. And... Waukesha, I think it can go anywhere in the marketplace. I think it's how it goes in that field. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty easy game. Like you said, just find the bag, bring it back. If you die, you drop it. Correct. Correct. Uh, do you guys have any any basic strategy? Like defense or attacking, anything you want to toss in here? Basic strategy, I would say obviously don't crowd the bag or else it gives it away. But just have yeah. one or two people buy it just in case someone somehow gets past you, you know? It's always kind of impossible to like implement that, I feel like, if you're, unless you're in like, a mostly regular session because I feel like mm-hmm. most of the time when new people come to play, their like first instinct is to like stand on top of it, yeah, or they just don't know where it is at all and they're just playing for kills. Which like I guess okay, <laughs> yeah. but um, I mean ideally yes, but also I kind of feel like at the same time when you're playing that game and even if you don't have anybody on the bag, just because of how the game is and like the the way team leaders are it's like almost impossible to like not know where it is regardless of which side you're on because the team leader is literally always like right next to the bag at all times and if it's not like next to it it's like in the general vicinity of or where you can see it so like if you're a regular like you know where it's gonna be based on a team where a team leader is so like like either way the position's kind of given away right so like if someone's standing on top of it, it really doesn't matter. In my opinion. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. I could also, like... I know everyone team leads differently. But uh, if you're on the Alcatraz map, like... And, uh... What's it called? Let's say... Uh, uh, Brats, are you able to pull up the Alcatraz map really, Absolutely. really quick? Absolutely. Thank Love that. you so We're so high much. tech. Like, okay, I can so, I can even put the dot where you want it. Oh sweet. Okay, so let's say oh you know where the you know the spot right next to the elevator. Yep. Uh, the you know how there's a bed there. 
Yep, right there. And, uh, like, if you're hiding under a bed, it has to be, like, halfway out and all that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you see the crawl space across from it? Like, the green yeah. crawl space down? Yeah. So I would be in the cell all the way on the other side, crouched down, looking through the crawl space. Oh, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, but... Yeah, but some of the regulars are like, oh, look, there's Christian. The bag is right next to him. They would go look under the there. bed next to me. And then I'd be like, dude, are you looking? Or Honestly, like, a lot of the times when I used to team lead in Alcatraz and the like, if the bag was hid on the first floor, pretty much anywhere on Alcatraz, you can stay upstairs as a team leader and watch the bag. As a matter of yeah. fact, it's, it's easier most of the time. Yeah. So th I feel like that's the best way, like, to make it inconspicuous as a team leader. Not that that really matters, because I guess we're pretty much just talking from, like, player perspective. But that is a really good way to throw people off. Yeah, no, tips for team leaders is always good, too, because, you know, they're part of the game as much as they don't want to be when they stand by ice. But they are part of that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt oh, someone's feeling dang, for oh, doing their job? Oh, oh like, no. Oh. Honey. I'm sorry. Like, I love you, you all. You gotta go in like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the team leaders are there to enhance the game. They should be out there helping. No, I totally agree. Also, it's just it's safety. They should yeah. be there, period. But Absolutely. Anyway, um, I think for me, <laughs> I feel like really like the last couple of times I've played, I really like dropped the ball just in terms of like strategy and stuff like that. Like, I'm just like, I don't I haven't really talked to anybody on my team, like regular or not. I've kind of just like gone out there with the intention of like hopefully surviving long enough to find it <laughs> yeah um oh it's not like yeah i don't think it's the worst strategy in the world in alcatraz i don't think it's as great well actually i don't know mm, i feel like i'm gonna eat my words a little bit here because i was gonna say like i don't think it's as great of a strategy on shanty but also i play shanty like almost like 90 percent of the time so like i pretty much know everywhere you hide the bag on shanty so i don't be no one but i don't know i think kind of just like going for it and like checking the places that you you think it's most likely going to be is like your best chance or just like using common sense and a lot of the times i think what kind of sucks about the game is like just like kind of i wouldn't call it like a design flaw but just like in general it's like most of the time i feel like it gets hid like really close to spawn so like it's easier to respawn and guard it so like first cell in the prison and stuff like that which i get but also like you know it's it's a little lackluster in that way yeah um that reminded me of two of my kind of favorite strategies which are a little cheesy but they work really well mm -hmm. number one it, this is hey, if it works, yeah, it works. advanced strategy number one at the <laughs> beginning of the game if you're attacking push as far across the field as you can when you die and you're walking back, that's when you look for the bag. So you don't stop See, and like look under beds. But I was, you walk in a straight line back, and you just gotta look around and see where the bag is on your way back. See, I always felt like that was cheating. Really? Like, I'm not gonna say I don't, I, have not, I haven't done it before, but like, I always felt kind of guilty after like doing it because I was like, I was dead. Like, I'm not technically, like, I shouldn't be playing the game, right? Like, I feel like that defeats the purpose because then otherwise you're like, oh, I know where the bag is. I'm going to run straight back there. Like, it's obviously not something that's outlined as cheating, but I always feel maybe it's just me. <laughs> but I always feel shitty coming back and being like, oh, I know where it is now. So, you know, fuck it. So I feel like like if you're dead, you shouldn't be like snooping for it because nobody can stop you from doing that. I mean, as long as you're not actively searching for the bag. But that's like, what you're saying to do. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, as you die, like, say, here, I'll pull up the map again. Hold on. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. Yeah, so, like, you're saying you, get, is, you start here, like you push map. across. You happen to notice it on your You die path. here, and then instead of, you just kind of walk down the hallway, and you just kind of look left and right as you're walking back. You don't stop and look in cells. But, I guess. You know, you sure. just look around as you're walking through. I guess, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's a bad thing to do. Like, I would never be like, oh, my God, why are you doing that? Like, I wouldn't jump his throat for doing it. But I think that my thing is, like, I've definitely seen people and thought about just literally, like, walking around the entire map. Like, I've seen people do that before. They'll die, like, like right by spawn or something like that. And they'll literally go out of their way to walk all the way around to, like, yeah, see if they can see it. And that's I'm not like, cool, no. 
that <laughs> like that defeats the purpose of the game, bro. Go go back and respawn and go then go look for it. Right. No, yeah, if you're walking out of your way to get back, no, that's not cool. Like straight line sure. back, but on your way back, observe your surroundings. Sure, 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 sure. Uh second one I have is uh cut off the reinforcements. So one of the biggest things in this one and some of the other games is you have to stop them from getting to defend. So if you can have one or two people flank the spawn area, not spawn camping, but mm -hmm. just killing them when they get back to defensive spots often. Sure. That's going to help your team find the bag because then they're going to be focusing on killing you instead of defending the bag. Right. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, it's it's simple, but it's still pretty advanced. Um Yeah. I'm going to pull up the map again. I've already showed you guys some of these, but like Alcatraz, like if you, can, think... if you can get around like these flanks here on the corner, if you're attacking bus stop side, mm -hmm. like those flanks are good. Um, if you're upstairs again, you can hang around here and pick people off both through the door and then also through the side hallway. There's so many uh -huh. places where you're not being super uh, offensive to the game. But you're still providing like real good support to your team. Uh huh. Right. <clears throat> um. I was gonna segue mm -hmm. a little bit into hiding spots. Yeah, just totally. because whenever I think of, and since like we're kind of focusing on Alcatraz right now, whenever I think of hiding spots in Alcatraz for domestic threat, I always think of because not necessarily because it's the easiest but just because i think it's a lot more fun <laughs> like for either side like either like capturing it from upstairs or like protecting it from upstairs mm -hmm. i don't know i think just like personally i think it's more interesting it's a lot more work if you're hiding it personally yeah. but also i think it's a lot more work if you if you have to go up there and get it and like you actually have people who can hold upstairs but i feel like i said that about i said that about black hawk down too i think yeah but I, I like a good upstairs game. It's fun. Yeah. Um, I generally agree. The downside to hiding something upstairs is that as the game goes on, people stop going upstairs to defend. It sucks. Sure. So the game Which becomes harder and harder. Like, I think it depends on like who you're playing with. Because like, if I'm playing with like Sean, Sodi emerald like i'm having no problems putting it upstairs on period uh, like that's obviously. going upstairs yeah sure so that's what I'm saying. It's like i feel like it definitely depends on who you're playing with but i mean i'm kind of a crazy person i'll put it up there mm -hmm. either way but i don't think it goes up there most of the time just because it's it's obviously much easier to defend downstairs right i will say upstairs has two of the cheesiest hiding spots on the field uh -huh. Um, I think sure. I think everyone kind of knows about these, but they get forgotten. Like behind the little mini barriers, mm -hmm. there's the shadowy spot where you just can't see anything. I love those. I've gotten some of my best captures. Yeah, <laughs> in those spots, it is literally the best feeling ever. Yeah. Um, Your uh, brother always hides it there, Natalie. Mm. So... It's a good spot. Oh, squid, nice. Very, yeah. It's a very dark spot. Hard to see the bag. Yeah. Also, he's great at playing upstairs, so that kind of makes sense to me. That is true. Um, other than that, upstairs, it's pretty much just going to be like hiding in the back of a guard tower, usually at the top of the stairs, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> I suppose. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, what about downstairs? What kind of spots you guys like downstairs? I know this is a staple, the first cell, when you go into the right over by the yeah. elevator. First cell on the right, always. Like... <laughs> Like, that's the staple. I actually like this spot a little bit better, which is when you go through the hallway and you just turn left right away. Mm -hmm. And you just dump it oh, there. It does add a little, like, a couple more feet for them to travel. So, like, yeah, it's. It makes sense. Yeah, it, it makes them go a little bit further. Um, But you kind of have the riskiness of someone just, like, turning the corner, grabbing the bag, and running straight down. So like if someone oh, were like to, if they, yeah if someone sweeps the uh, spawn and then just comes in and grabs it and then they're off. Right. I'm a really big fan of this thing that we started doing, which is like inside of the um, fire distinguisher 
post. Oh, over here. Yeah. Oh, and the po- stuff it in the pulse. Yeah, I got stuffing it. it into the pole. That's. <laughs> That's, it's pretty good. It is borderline questionable, but very good. It's definitely, it's well. You, I honestly, I think one of my best, like, my favorite things about it is that, like, when you put it, I don't. Is it the same on the other side? Uh, it's not. No, the 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 post is different over there. It's different, but is there a crawl space by that one too, or no? Yeah. They, on um. Yeah, they both have crawl spaces. I love that. Because, like, if you fuck up and you're not watching that crawl space, like, somebody from the other team can just, like, go straight through there, pull it out, and, like, run down the hall. Yeah. And that's happened to me before, and I was so salty, but I was also like that. I knew it was going to happen. Oh, like, I, yeah. I knew it. Speedrunner just reminded me of the uh, one of the great spots if you have a good solid upstairs team. You just drop it center middle in the back, and you just have someone stand on top of it the whole time and just shoot down oh, the hallways. Oh, yeah. For sure. That's Thank a good Thank you. One. Thank you, Joey. I've totally forgotten about that one. I haven't done that one in a long time. You have to be very confident that your team can hold the upstairs if you do that one. I was about to say, I feel like if you're if you're talking about upstairs being a hard thing to hold, then definitely putting there is not, not a good option. Mm-hmm. But it is makes for a very interesting and like I feel like intense game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Because you have to be upstairs. Um, this is yeah. also coincidentally the best spot to hide or stand on Alcatraz if you're playing an objective game because uh-huh. you, it gives you the most division and the safest spot to respawn from. And you have almost 100% cover there. Yeah. Sure. It's a great spot to fight from. Mm-hmm. Hard for them to knock you out of, but um, hard to knock your opponent out of. Yeah. I hate that spot because I can't fucking see. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm not better. You're better. <laughs> right. Cheesy spots downstairs that I've seen used. The mirror side. So if you're on the bus stop, there's the cell over here. Same idea as the other side. There's a bed there. You can stuff it under. Right. On this side, on both sides, there's a bed with a shelf. Sometimes you can just toss it on the shelf and people won't notice it. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else do we have? I've seen this a few times. Technically, it works because it's part of the prison. I don't know if it's outlawed in the new ways, but you can put it in the nooks uh, down the stairwells. Nook. Oh, you mean behind that wall? Yeah, where the um, where the cutout is. It really? hasn't. Yeah, it hasn't been done in a very long time. But basically, once they outlawed the back hallway, oh, people stopped oh, okay. putting it over here. I was thinking about something different, but yeah, that's. I think yeah, sure, whatever. I mean, I've I mean, seen, it's like I've seen it like put on both it sides. By the elevator. I feel yeah. Like. The elevator. Really yeah. I know the elevator you're not allowed to do anymore because that's too far out of the prison. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Um, I'll have to talk to my, uh, to Mike and the team leaders to see if anyone's still allowed to do that spot. But, um, that's a decent spot because there's just lots of places you can cover it from, and there's really only one way in and out. Right. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. That is, I think that's pretty much it for Alcatraz. Um, oh, I have a question for you guys. When you grab the bag, you guys run it straight down the prison, straight out, or do you like to take alternate routes? Straight I think down. it just depends, honestly. For me, it's always straight down. Feel, straight down the gullet. I feel like my answers are always going to be, like, dependent. <laughs> well, it's going to be dependent on, one, who I'm playing with, and two, where the bear, the bear, nope, the bag is at the moment. Because, mm-hmm. like, let's say it's not in its, it was in its original place or whatever. Yeah. It might just be safer to take an alternate route. But I think that most of the time going up the middle is fine, especially in Alcatraz. Yeah, that's probably uh-huh. true. The only time I would avoid going straight down the middle, and I agree with everything you guys have said, uh, the only time I would... Uh, sorry, I'm looking at my bitrate on uh, Twitch tank right now it looks like everything's okay though that's weird uh anyways okay i'm back um the only time i wouldn't go down the middle is if somebody is camping in the creeper tower because they will just they'll just light you up so if so if you're coming back to bus and they've got somebody sitting up here in the top um but if you're if you're going back to bus and somebody's sitting up there in the top by the time that you get there and they're shooting you i don't know how much that matters 
It's true. Depending on which side you're running up, because they're not going to be able to shoot you from the far, um, the far right. right. Yeah, you can go up the so, other I side. Mean, you're right. Um, it just by the time you get yeah. there, your team is going to be running at you, watching you come with the bag. So I mean, they mm -hmm. can just pick it up and walk it. Yeah, that's fair. Absolutely. Um, I like to be cheesy. I like to take different routes because it makes the game more exciting. Sure, I don't think that's cheesy. Yeah, like I'll occasionally just go through underpasses and come out like the side hallways and just come straight down by death row or garbage. Work, <laughs> it is, but if like the minute they say bag has been bag is moving, pretty much ninety nine percent of the regulars are gonna like look toward the middle. Right. Just give him a little rope a dope, come out the side. It's like I've maybe done it less than five times ever. Mm hmm. Uh, so yeah, it's it's not a huge strategy, but I have taken it outside before. Ooh, I'm not yawning. You're yawning. Yeah. Um. <laughs> attack, defense. I mean, defense strategy. If we're ready to move on to that, I think it's pretty easy. You really just want to like herd the people roughly in an area where the bag is. Uh -huh. Right. Uh, there's a good player is going to be able to kill probably five, six brand new players in a row without even getting hit. Mm -hmm. But it will slow them down. Uh -huh. um, sometimes that's all you need is that like second for someone to slow down before you can turn around and shoot them or respawn and come get them. Right. So I will personally try to keep the newer players and the people who haven't played as often as close to the bag area as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much all you can do on defense and just really hope that you can trust people to not flank you. Oh yeah, that's true. It's kind of hard to play defense. Yeah. It's like, but I suppose those like big, big sessions where like, I feel you have like, like all those people running around. Yeah. Some people feel... lose track of the game so much. I think the worst, like, <sighs> I hate saying worse because that seems like a really intense like <laughs> but I think I think the worst part about playing like objective games like domestic threat in situations where you don't have like a lot of established regulars or like people who want to work with you is that like at the end of the day like everybody's kind of doing something independently and mm -hmm. it's like if you're defending especially on those games it's important to be doing like have like a goal at least something like loose so that everybody knows like where they need to be and like what positions they should be holding because like otherwise it's so easy for somebody to just pop up grab it and run away mm -hmm. like all you have to do is lean over a little bit so they can't shoot your back sensor and you're like home free if nobody is like ready to you know kind of like diffuse that problem as soon as it gets there and i think that that's a problem you see with a lot of uh like objective games that we play is that like everybody's doing their own thing and if there's no like a baseline of communication a lot of times you're going to see the defense fall apart almost immediately because you're not establishing that plan right no i 100 percent agree with you uh communication in this game even more than pretty much any of the other games is going to be what's going to win you the game absolutely yeah making sure that people know what they should be doing or if someone's roaming around completely lost, just getting them back on track. Right. <clears throat> All right. When we go back, when we go back to, I had, sorry, I had something for like advanced strategy. Yeah, or I don't know, definitely. I don't know if it's considered advanced, sure. but mm -hmm. let's say we're running a 10 V 10 and you're running three regulars on three regulars that's why i like to do i count my regulars and see what like how it weighs down because you know how people i'll admit sometimes people new people especially they forget to go upstairs they're looking for the bag in the same place downstairs five times thinking that it'll be there right so so let's say you got 10 players on the opposite team three regulars and seven new people if you hide the this is how I think of it. If you hide the bag upstairs, that's seven people that will be downstairs the whole time looking for the bag, and you only have three people to worry about. 
Mm -hmm. So like you can let those bottom people, they can look around downstairs as much as they want. I won't even touch them. But if it's a regular coming up the stairs or somehow a new person decides, oh, I'll go upstairs just one time to see how it is. And I pop them. They have to waste more time going back down and to see if that regular wants to go up or try to go around me. That's another thing. And having them go all the way around me waste their time on finding the bag. If they come up the same staircase, I'll be there. Anyway, so. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. so like Only focus on what matters. Mm -hmm. That's some art of war shit right there. That's some art of war. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, yeah. though. Know the uh, enemy. I, yeah, I studied at the University of Sun Tzu. So, Ooh, uh, you know, get him. The... <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's transition here and let's just talk about the difference between the fields really quick. Mm -hmm. um, I actually do have a very specific question. It's something that I want to bring up to the uh, field as a whole, but shanty, 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 mm -hmm. shanty, shanty. How I love the shanty man. Oh, the Is... map to be. Should this spot or this room? Be allowed as a legal hiding spot. I think I'm already gonna say yes. The single yeah. entrance room. Yeah. 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 Is, I'd say so. Absolutely. Really? Because, yeah. Because one. Oh, of course. <laughs> because one. <laughs> this is gonna go straight back to my point about working as a team and why a lot of times defensive strategy doesn't work when you don't work together because alone. Usually trying to get that bag from that spot is like really, really hard, especially on that map, because that room is still relatively close to spawn. So like if you sprint slow jog <laughs> from there to spawn, you can get there and back really quickly if you're on the, you know, the defending team. But like if you're attacking and you go with more than one person who has any clue what they're doing, it is not that hard to get the bag from that area. As a matter of fact, I would argue to say it's much easier really i think that because a lot of times when i see people hide it in that corner i see players who defend it and they corner themselves they turn their backs to the wall their backs to the bag so they're basically sitting on it so literally like it's just a shoot off and if there's more than one of you going for the bag i mean like it, it, tops you need three people to get the bag from that corner tops at any given time like unless there's like three regulars sitting on it you literally only need three decent players if you're in a shootout against anybody else around that bag chances are not everybody is there you can kill the people there go and grab the bag and run back like i don't think it's that hard i think it's just a matter of understanding who's going with you and having that communication knowing your job and going and doing it point blank period okay I disagree. Boy, <laughs> 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 we're about to get heated over the conversation. I was about to say, because he probably literally, disagree because every he brought this time, question up. Every <sighs> single time that we have played together and we play this game on this map and it gets hit there, I'm literally like, we need to go and do this together. We can't do it separately. It's not going to work. And you fucking run the other direction, boy. You literally never listen to me. And then when someone does listen to me and goes with me there, I bring the bag back and I'm like, see, it wasn't that hard. Maybe you should just try, I don't know, listening to me once in a while. I do kind of know what I'm talking about sometimes. Okay. Like, fair. Uh, I, I think, okay. Heated. So, so here's my argument. My argument is that Elk, or not Alcatraz, this is Shanty. Shanty is a relatively unbalanced field. The imbalance that comes from that spawn being able to look straight in isn't mirrored on the other side. It's close, but it's not quite. Um, it's just so easy to defend if you have one or two regulars. Like, it's almost impossible. Like, if you have hover plus anybody guarding that side, you're not getting the bag because they'll just stand there and just unload into the corner. Well, are you going by yourself? No, I mean, it doesn't matter because if you're two steps from the tube, like, you don't leave. I'm going to get rid of my green screen overlay really I quick. I was going to say. Like, um, if you just stand you here, 
you can just turn your gun, get respawned, walk to here, and then you're shooting again. It's like no downtime. It is done a lot. Like, I've watched it. Like... I mean, I granted, it is very possible to get the bag. I'm firmly planted in my beliefs. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> I think... <laughs> I think, I, and, I, and the only reason I'm so firmly planted is number one, I am so salty from the last time that this happened to us because there was zero excuse. Number two, I have done it before with people who are not regulars against regulars and done it, and it has not been a problem. It, it's it's not even the distance that's an issue with respawning. It's and I think that part of it is that like once you once the person who is defending the bag in that corner gets killed it's like it doesn't matter how organized the people are around it unless they're like really like well planned they they scramble back so you have enough time to grab that bag and get around that corner before they're shooting at you and that's why you go with more people because if you go with more people then you have people covering the person who has the bag who's running back to spawn already and then it shouldn't be a problem bam boom done like that it's over <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i i think that this field would be better if you only attacked from the one side the other yeah like if it was just a side swap map where this side was always attacking this side was always defending just my personal opinion so you oh so swap sides for domestic threat. yeah right, so you just it. swap sides in between games all right all right like with like the always, yeah, okay, gotcha. But I mean, I totally oh. see like that. I guess the room can't be illegal to hide in because just teamwork, just do it. I understand. I just really hate it because typically you're not going to get a lot of regulars playing on shanty uh, at one time. For some reason, most people just don't like the field as much. Um, what? It's just so <laughs> hard, man. <laughs> If you don't have a lot, you're like making a case for what I'm saying. If you don't have a lot of regular, no excuse as to why you can't get the bag from that room. That's fair. Period. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, all right. I guess it's a fair spot. The chat agrees with you. Pretty much the entire chat is saying that it should be fine. Look, I told you, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I know what I'm talking about. No, I believe you. Like in the next meeting we have, Chris, next thing I'm going to say, next thing I'm going to hear from Mike, we're going to start swapping sides with domestic threat. Like, that's no, all. no, 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 that's fine. <laughs> I mean, it was just my idea, but I mean, I mean wait, if most no, people no. don't think it, that's fine. Different different opinion. I'm not mad at swapping, swapping sides during domestic threat. I think that's a different topic oh. altogether, personally. Like, I'm not, that's not the worst idea in the world, but I still don't think that room should ever be off limits because I think that it is more than an achievable goal to get the bag from there. That is my only stance. <laughs> Just to be clear. I don't think it is unfair to hide the bag in that room. That's all. Okay. That's I agree. You've changed my mind. It's fine. <laughs> I just love yeah. that for me. <laughs> nice job. All right. That uh Yeah, I think that uh I think that settles it. Have you guys ever seen anybody hide it upstairs on Shanty? Yes. You yes. Have. Yeah, Powers was the one that uh hit it and it was upstairs. Uh shoot. It was like somewhere upstairs and then the you take a right and then it's like in the it's not all the way in the corner but a little bit out you know i got you okay yeah the last time i played and it was hiding upstairs it was um uh across from the wall with the the two windows right by rick and morty oh sure it was like off in that corner it wasn't the worst hiding spot in the world but it wasn't the best <laughs> yeah it's very quick to get up and down in there yeah it's i definitely wouldn't call it uh preferable to put it upstairs but i'm also not opposed to it the the strangest spot i've ever seen is on the middle staircase sitting on the first platform i think i've seen really? that done too mm -hmm. 
It was actually a decent hiding spot. I was going to say, that's not like the worst idea, just because it's an awkward place to get to. Yeah, and the staircase is you... aimed toward your spawn. Yeah, yeah, and no matter what you do, you have to like kind of like take a, a relatively open route to get there. Yeah, you end up being very exposed. Hmm. See, no, that's an idea. idea. See, I think the only problem with that, though, that comes with that is that, well, even still, though, that's like difficult. Yeah, there's not an easy way to get back to your spawn because you either have to go down toward the enemy or you have to go back upstairs. Right. Which is going to take you longer. What I was thinking was like, what I was thinking that would be easier is like if you went upstairs and then like came down to get the bag, like clear upstairs, right? Then go down and mm -hmm. out, but that's still regardless, it's still kind of awkward unless it's the spawn that's facing that staircase. Right. Right. It was an Not interesting that. spot. I haven't seen it often. I've only seen it the one time, but it was pretty good. Pretty good. I was uh, I was team leading one day, and this dude found the bag, grabbed the bag, was not shot at all, brought it to the wrong spawn. Oh, that feels bad. He's playing he Griff Ball? Fucking bad. Yeah, he, hard, yeah. <laughs> he made the game harder for him and his team by bringing it back to the wrong spawn. Like, I didn't know what to do. So I was like, do I leave it here, or do I at least throw it into the first jail cell? Or like, Look, I don't know. I'm not even going to lie. Sometimes no, when I'm not it. paying attention, I begin. You gotta leave it? Yeah. I've done it. <laughs> I've like been mid sprint to like the wrong spot and been like, oh fuck. <laughs> oh god, I'm about to get shot right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm that's... like, why am I running into people who don't look like me? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <sighs> again, it's happening again. <laughs> All right. I think that that was a very good discussion of. Domestic threat. I'll give uh, about 30 seconds for anybody in the chat if they have any questions or topics they'd like to bring up before we uh, move on toward the final part of our stream here. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, as we're doing that, noises. yeah, as we're doing that, next week will be domination. So get some ideas, questions for the live chat if you'd like to ask us anything live. Uh, we'll, we'll end each discussion with a quick chat. Um... I guess while we're waiting for questions to come in, if there are any, uh, what uh, what would be your number one tip for a brand new player playing Domestic Threat? Ooh. I'll go first. I'll let you guys think. Um, my tip that I give all Domestic Threat brand new players is to be patient because this is the one of the few games that we play at iCombat where killing isn't the main objective mm -hmm. so you really have to be resilient enough in like not getting frustrated to continue to go get the bag or just to keep searching because yeah. it's so easy to get distracted and wander off to the side hallway and just shoot your friends when in, yeah. in reality whatever it's fine but you're not going to win the game doing that right under the assumption that this player is actually listening to me. <laughs> so I feel like a lot of the times when you like tell new people that like this game is like based around an objective that doesn't get you any type of points. So like, I'm just going to go for kills, which is like, I totally get that. That makes sense. Sure. Whatever. <laughs> but like, I feel like I would pretty much give the same advice. It's like, be patient, be willing to kind of like keep going for it. But also like my biggest thing every single time we play and i'm i'm not going to stop saying this about objective games is like if you have players on your team who have any ounce of common sense and know what they're doing like listen to them and follow like their idea or any semblance of a plan that you can make before the game starts because most of the time when you have a plan you're going to do better than if you don't in any objective scenario like and i believe that i think that it withstands the test of time and people period like i would hey, try and come up with a time. <laughs> i would try and come up with some kind of plan and stick to it because i feel like a lot of the times that's what works we just got and, like, copyrighted just be willing by disney to <laughs> be willing to communicate with the people around you and like scream if you have to yell at your positions like let people know where you're going like stuff like that it's just really like keep communication open yeah all right christian mm. all right so when defending the tip i always give to new people is if uh 
Because I know they're not, like, sometimes they lose track of going upstairs, like I mentioned before. But I would say find a spot you're comfy with, aim, and keep looking down your sight. Just right. get ready for a person to walk out of that corner. Yeah. Like, the get more that, that person up. dies, yeah, the more your enemy dies, the less time they have to look for a bag. Oh, God, this is true, this is true. <laughs> All right. And then upstairs, oh, or sorry, uh, attacking, my number one tip would be some, like, some people, it sounds like a completely new person uh, strategy, but I think it works. Some people, uh, well, let's say we're going to have another 10 on 10. Let's say me and the three regulars are going to sweep the upstairs. And then we'll have four new people go downstairs, but on the left side of the jail cells, and then three new people jail cells on the right side. Then we're each just going to look and look and look and look. Obviously, when we sweep the upstairs and we don't find it up there, we're going to yell that it's not up there. Right. So, like, okay. Just stick with your spot and just keep, make sure to communicate. Communication is key, baby. Not just for relationships, but also laser tag. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Literally, I'm about to, you know, get on Discord calls with my, uh, Oh. and then talk to teammates as <laughs> there you go hey <laughs> yep may as well so we've got one question from the chat Ooh. uh real quick both of you first thing that comes to mind for domestic threat what does the fox say oh all right birdie's answer is oh <laughs> oh no. no comment burn you gotta no come comment. up with better questions buddy no comment. Uh. <laughs> All right, we are, we are, we are done. We are done with domination chat. All right, or er, domestic threat chat. Yep. Next week yep. is domination. Woo! Uh, we're gonna be going alphabetically down the line. So if you are a smart oh, kid, yeah. you can figure out the schedule for those. All right. We are getting near the end of the podcast, and I promised everybody a announcement of epic proportions. Oh my! It's going. I think it's about time. So, for the seventeen or so viewers that have stuck around through the end, awesome! Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks, Remember to follow, like, subscribe, Twitch, Twitch, Twitch subs. They give us money, which gets you guys prizes. I'm just saying. We also get a new emote if we get up to 15. So we're at nine. We're at six right now. The nine key. more and we get a new emote. Um, all right. I've delayed enough. We have, I have an announcement. Uh, this doesn't have really anything to do with the podcast, but it's a platform. So I'm going to use it. Because why wouldn't I? Are you, are you going to say it or? Oh, I will. Right after I announced that Razor just gave us a tier one subscription. Welcome to the wow! Pew Crew, sir. Uh, yay! Thank hey, you. Welcome, man. Oh, so many hugs. Thank you so, so much. Goodness. We appreciate it. Enjoy your use of the Boom CH2 Keck. <laughs> look at look at it's look at what Fern man. said. Look at what Fern said. <laughs> no, sorry, Fern. We are not getting married. <laughs> All right, the announcement that I have to make is as follows. This weekend, I have assembled a crew of about 12 to 18 people, and we are going to be beta testing a competitive league that is going to be in the format of one verse one. And that's <gasps> on period. Yo. Roughly how this is going to work, if everything works out well, is each week you will be rated on seven statistics. Those statistics are kills, accuracy. I've already forgotten what they all are. Uh, right. <laughs> Come on, right. honey. I'm trying to help you out here. <laughs> Hold on. I got to get to my Google Docs. Ah. Is it a... Uh... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wow, Is I just permitted it on there. Oh. No, it's not. No, all right. I was trying to take a guess. Wow, I just got pee shy. Holy crap! I just totally <laughs> forgot what I was talking about. It happens. It happens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Knock it off. I, uh, it. I need another no, mimosa fine. for this. 
Da, 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 da. There it is. 1v1 template. Okay, so your rated stats <laughs> are, sorry, kills, accuracy, session win percentage. Ooh. And then yeah. we have four stats that are derived based on what we can figure out from the barracks. First one is your objective score. What that is is your score okay. taking out all of your points for kills. So if you complete objectives, you get credit. I figured out the math. <sighs> Took me a while, but I figured it out. You guys should be really impressed with him. Just the, uh, I'm just a big nerd. The next one is objective win percentage. So this is your win percentage only for games that are not based on kills. You so take out Reaper, take out TDM, <laughs> take out Terminator, take out Sniper. Those games don't count. How do you do on the team games? That's what we care about. The last two stats are points per kill. That takes your total points per the session, divides it by the kills you got. It is a measure of how much contribution you're giving to your team. So be that a high kill streak, be that scoring objectives, be that... Um, that's really just the two things that affect it, objectives and kill streaks. So how much are you helping your team get to that victory? The last score oh. is points per death. That is a measure of what you're doing with your life. So for players that aren't going to run across the map guns blazing, um, that stat's going to help you out a lot. Uh, what it's going to do... Holy Jesus Christ, time out. What the heck? Oh, no. Razor, 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 Razor just single-handedly got us Whoa. to 17 subs. What the hell? <laughs> Razor! Look at that. What a guy! Razor gifting 10 subs to the chat. That's why Jeez. you stick around, folks. I that there is why you stick you. around. Can I get some... Jeez. Can we get some kex in the chat since everybody can do it now? Hype in the oh, chat! Hype man. in the chat! <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my god, you are so sweet. That's so, uh, that's my heart. It's just, it's oh overflowed. my god. That's so adorable. That is Thanks, wild. Man, what the Thank hell? Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. That's, that's incredible. That I is incredible. I was so shocked when Chris was like, hold on. What? I was like, what, what, what? what? <laughs> when like, you, have an, when you, you have an announcement and Razor says, hold on, I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> hold, hold my drink. <laughs> they really had us in the first half. They really did. So anyways, how this, I'm going to get back on track now. Thank you so much. That's amazing. That's probably going to get us to a point where we can probably be really close to taking a uh, withdrawal from Twitch. And buy some gift cards for the chat. So thank you so much, Razor. We appreciate that. Uh, we'll talk off stream here with the hosts, and we'll see if we can maybe dedicate something in the uh, in the podcast going forward for that. That was really nice of you. Thank you. Um. Anyways, back to the league. Oh boy. Okay. So we have all these stats that we're going to be tracking. You're going to be paired up against another player uh, in the league. Uh, and here's a wild thing. It could be on any field. So this is going to be open to all the fields to play. Um, yeah. The stats do normalize over long periods of time. Granted, places like Michigan have generally more kills. But the other stats really determine how well you play as a teammate. So it should be a good measure of comparing people across fields as well as inside of the field. Um we will beta test it this weekend. I have people submitting me games so I can see if the scoring is going to work. If it does work, we'll make an announcement next week and we'll do probably two weeks of signups and then we will launch the first week. I am in Dutch on period. Yeah, I am contemplating limiting the first league to only 16 players. Uh, approximately it'll be, I think I did this. Excuse me, a nine-week league, six weeks of regular play, and then a three-week tournament. If my math is correct, it might be a four-week tournament to end it out. There will be um, a paid portion because we will be providing... I say we as in the royal we because it's really just me organizing this. 
Um, I will be providing prizes and swag uh, and a- actual awards that will hopefully be uh, posted both at iCombat and delivered to the winners and people that have scored MVPs, most improved, etc. week by week. Um, yeah, there's a lot happening, and I really wish I could spoil everything right now, but it's still very fluid in its writing because some things just haven't been figured out yet, but I have about 95% of it done, and yeah, I'm looking forward to announcing it hopefully next week that we're going to be... Um, oh, Speedrunner, I can absolutely answer that. Um, every single objective game... Even if you don't get points through the game system, you'll be awarded points for winning the objective. Um, basically, I don't want to. I don't want to keep the host on the stream. We're getting to eleven o'clock. Um, if you guys want to know more um, after we kill the stream, I'm going to come back online and I'll go over a quick uh, synopsis of what's going on with the uh, with the scoring because there is a very good question of how objectives are going to be scored if they're not scored in the game. Um, I have a pretty good system figured out for it. Um, but yeah, keep your eyes out for that. 1v1, all fields are eligible to join. Um, likely looking at a $20 entry fee. Uh, that'll cover nine weeks of competition. So that's a pretty good deal, I think. I hope. This is all for you guys. I love this community. I want to give back as much as I can. So... Let's uh let's get some competitive play. If iCombat's not gonna give it to us, we'll give it to ourselves. Oh hell yeah. Did I just never mind. I should probably yeah. rephrase that wording. next time. Wording. The wording didn't but work very well. We're there. just gonna Oh hell yeah. <laughs> All we're right. just gonna jam the marbles anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That is it for the show. Uh we are gonna go through the hosts one last time. What do you got going on for the next week? What do we have to look forward to? Our oh, Defenestrate's coming in this weekend if you're watching. Whoa! Oh, yes. yes. is coming yes. in Everybody from Iowa. He will be back Friday, likely around seven o'clock. Let's fill the sessions. Uh We've got a lot of playing to do, and he wants to hit the top 10. So I've got the weekend Whoa. off. I'm not working. We're going to smash some sessions. We're coming for you, meth. Dang, maybe I don't need to go to this convention. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just so kidding. mad that you just did that. Yeah, that's, that's my news. I'll go first. I'm going to be working on the lead the rest of the week. I'm going to be compiling data to make sure that my formulas work. If you are interested, definitely talk to me. I don't have the official email set up yet, but talk to me because I will get you on the list. Um, Whoa, look at what RZ is doing. Oh my gosh. He's like, gifted a tier one sub to like all these people. <laughs> Did he do it again? What is going on? Whoa, we have 27 like subs. 27. Oh my Jesus. gosh. All right. Someone cut this man off. Take his credit card away. Oh, jeez. But really, like that okay. that that gratuity <laughs> is so so freaking thank you. You want a large fries with that gift? Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk. We're going to talk off stream. I, I feel like I owe you a drive up to Michigan right this second. Hug. Oh I think my gosh. I think I think I don't know. What do you guys think is is an emote in order for this? Absolutely. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, All right, yeah. Gratu- a on period. Yeah, so we uh we're gonna be working on an emote. I'll talk to you off stream sometime. We'll get some pictures from you. We'll do something. Wow, I'm just my mind is blown. This is I amazing. Am Thank you so much. Uh, I lost my thinking train. Uh, also, God, we're this is like we're so we're we're crashing morning. through ceilings right now because we just hit a hundred followers as well. Oh hell yeah! Oh yeah! Whoa. Three oh. podcasts in, we've already tripled our follower count, and we Guys, have over. Oh my gosh! We have gone from one to twenty-seven subs. This has taken off, guys. We appreciate this. We're we're doing this for you guys. We want this community to be something amazing. And this the, is so like sweet. I I I'm actually happy. I don't know if you can see it, but I actually legit have some goosebumps right now because of the love that we're getting here. Ooh, I'm not gonna cry. You guys are crying. 
All right. You're adorable. That gives I me you. that gives me freaking energy to figure out this league and give it back to you guys. This is amazing. Thank you so much for that again, Razor. Um Jesus, I got nothing. That's it for me. I'm done talking. Uh, uh you, you guys finish up and then I'll close the stream when we're done here. I don't be no one. I don't be knowing what else to say except for uh if I didn't love y'all, I wouldn't stay up past my grandma ass bedtime. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to make you, you people are some of the only people that I will stay up past the hours of about 9 30 p.m. for. So that should speak for itself. Um, thank you so much, everybody who's watching tonight, and and I can't wait to do it again next week. It's always worth it. Yeah, always nice. Yeah, All Chan, right. I'm going to interrupt you, but uh, I want to congratulate our newest mod, Razor. There you go. Congrats. You earned it. I'm not saying yeah. the bribes work, but hey, bribes work. Look at that. <laughs> oh, my God. Hey. <laughs> so I'll bribe and slip him a moderator. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> all right chris what do you got coming up all right guys so basically i'm going to not be at eye combat at all unless uh joey we were talking earlier i'm leaving him some of the some of these some of these like little jawbreakers so like i might bring the whole bag just so that way i can share with everybody but uh, that's all i'm gonna do just drop it off so yeah well you can all try it but other than that i will be at c2e2 uh in the mccormick place all the way in chicago you're gonna be right Basically. by me. What the hell? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should hang out because I'm not gonna be going out there. I don't think till like Saturday evening. So. Oh really? We can hang out at the con and everything. Oh god. Uh, so yeah, if you guys are, if some of you guys are somehow going to C2E2, you'll see me there. But on my YouTube channel, next Tuesday, you're gonna get a con. I'm gonna rate the con. Uh, my experience. I'm gonna tell everyone about it, and I might say a little bit more. Uh, coming next Wednesday. But that's all I have for the announcement. That's all I got. Love oh, it. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, here we go. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. That was Bless fun. You. <laughs> all right. That is going to be it for episode three, a groundbreaking episode of the Gear Swap. Thank you so much to our amazing community. Um, go make your fields better. Teach the noobs. Kill the noobs. Cultivate the noobs. Make them regulars because they're really what keeps this. Uh, they're <laughs> what keeps this. Uh, outro. Teach noobs. Kill the noobs. Cultivate the noobs. The noobs. Cultivate the noobs. Yeah. Cultivate. Yeah. You know you gotta. You, I lost you, it when I heard cultivate. <laughs> you, you bring the noobs in. You kill oh, them. Fuck, that's so funny. You cultivate them into mulch, and then they grow into blossoming, 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 blossoming Honey, regulars. All types of. I think you're just all full of shit over there. <laughs> you're not wrong. Um, please spread the word of the gear swap. Uh, we are here every Wednesday, nine thirty. That time will probably stay that way for a little while, at least until we get established. Uh, we this will be up on YouTube tomorrow, uh, streaming again live at 1 p.m. Central Time. Wow, 27 Drag subs. Friend. Drag your friends and your family to laser tag so that yes. they can make. Yes. Come out to eye combat. Them. Treat your field well. If your gear, no, nope, I'm not going to get into that yet. I got to say thank you again one more time to our awesome community. We're going up on two hours now. You guys have been. You guys are great. We're going to keep doing this every week just for you guys. This is this turned yeah. out to be a pretty pretty good use of time. So I am having fun doing yeah. this podcast. Every also, day. as a last final programming note, if anybody would like to contribute to the show in any way or be on the show as a guest um, speaker at some time, reach out to us. Um, I have Let the ability. Know. I have the ability to get other people on this show. So, um, all right, that's it. I'm going to do the sign out here. We love you all. Remember, always, if your gear's not working, do a gear swap. We will see you guys do next week. See y'all.